All right, thanks Barry. Simulation is one area that I get quite excited about, and some of the new ch some of the new features in ST6 simulation are really really worth getting excited about. I'm just going to switch over to display a gear bracket on this garage door winder. Now, I'm going to add a little bit in, you know, in addition to the notes, sorry Barry. Um, and this is one feature that I'm really, really happy about. I've got my normal Unite Bodies command. Um, that has been enhanced a little bit, so that's good. You don't need to copy the parts first. That's not what I'm talking about though. I'll create a new study. This is all fairly normal. And I'll select my United Body. That's all normal as well. Then I'll create a mesh. This is where it starts to change a little bit. I've got an option to show the mesh on close. And what happens here is I can keep visualizing this mesh while I am working on the part. So after I've closed my dialog box, I can still see my mesh. And so I can get a really good appreciation for the quality of this mesh. Now, you can see there's a little bit of mesh concentration over where my cursor is. I'll just switch across to the simulation toolbar. And this is what's really nice. I've got a mesh quality indicator there. And I can show the poor quality mesh on a particular part. And you can see it's sitting around what's basically an embossed logo on this part. So what I want to do is I want to remove that section from this part. I don't need the logo for the purposes of the analysis. So in my simulation geometry tree, I go to before I united the bodies, and then I'm just going to delete some faces. Just zoom out, make sure I get them all. And there are my faces that I want to delete. That's the logo. So I'll just delete them. Go back to my united body. And note it's now telling me I need to update the mesh. All right, that's good. I can update the mesh from here using my normal meshing option. However, if I've got multiple bodies in this, in this analysis, what I can also do now is I can remesh each individual entity. And that basically just saves an awful lot of time. So I'll remesh now, and you'll be able to see the change to the mesh. It's much, much better. And I've now got a high quality mesh which doesn't have the show poor quality because there are no elements that it considers poor quality. Anyway, that's, uh, that's my diversion. I'll get back on track now. And that is to analyze this gear support bracket. So I'll just open up my gear support bracket. And you'll notice in my synchronous tree, or a simulation tree, I've already got results on this part. So I'll just go and view the results on this part. Now, the face is loaded downwards due to the gear, and I've got about 14 megapascals worth of stress, and 0.189 millimeters of displacement. This is not a highly stressed not a highly deflecting part. So we can clearly optimize this. New to ST6 is the optimization command. And this is available as soon as you've actually created and meshed and solved a study. So I want to create a new optimization. It asks you to define the objective, what you're trying to achieve. And in this case, my objective is to minimize the mass. Then I get to set design limits. Okay, this is what I what I consider acceptable, and I'm going to say my total translation I want to be less than one millimeter. 
Now I can set multiple limits, because in reality there's often multiple limits. I can say my von Mises stress needs to be less than or equal to 60 megapascals, for example, if it's, if it's a form of aluminium. Then I'll move on to my design variables. I want to add a variable which the simulation is going to change, or the optimization is going to change, in order to find what the best options are. So I want to add my material thickness, and I'll create a rule. I'll say it has to be greater than or equal to 1 millimeter, and less than or equal to 5 millimeters thick. 5 is the current thickness, as you can see there. So now I've created my design variables and my control variables. I, I can set my change my iterations, and I can set my convergence parameters. For example, I might I might have a slightly higher relative convergence. Once I've set that to how I want, then I just hit optimize, and it goes away and makes alterations, you can see the thickness changing there, and analyzes the, the results for each and every iteration according to both the design limits, the objective, and the thickness parameters. When it's finished, it comes up, I can go straight in and start viewing the plots, or I can view the results summary, which I'll do now. It opens up the summary in Excel, and I'll just tidy this up a little bit. Okay, so I've got my objectives limit listed up the top there, what I'm attempting to do, and then I've got my results for each and every iteration through the process. My mass is what I want to minimize by changing my thickness and staying within these design limits. Now you'll notice here I've got two red limits. That's because 25 millimeters is higher than or outside my design limit. So it's 406 megapascals. Here it's got the megapascals down, but my total translation is still too high. As it goes through, it optimizes so that it keeps within the design limits and finds the best value for it. And you can see it also gives the factor of safety of each of the designs. Increase it out a little bit. In this, in these cases. Um, the maximum is not relevant, and it also gives you a graph. So each iteration it goes through the design objective and what's finally achieved. So it's a mass of, you know, 0.226 kilograms in iteration 7. So it gives you quite a bit of feedback there. Now I want to go and actually have a look at these results. So I can expand out my optimizations, and notice there's a set of results for each individual iteration. So I'll just expand out total translation for my final iteration. Well, just on just under one millimeter, which I said it had to be less than or equal to one millimeter, so that's good. I'm running at around 53 megapascals. So that's still under my design limit of 60 megapascals. So this is just some, some really useful tools for optimizing your design. Now, if you picked up on it, you'll probably notice that a material thickness of 2.91 is very, very difficult to come by. So what we need to do now is we need to alter the material thickness, and I'll just go in properties material table so we need we now need to use our engineering judgment to say well two millimeters is quite a bit under our design objective and so some of those 
sorry, under our, it, it will cause a higher stress and a higher translation than our objectives. Three millimeters, it's just slightly above, so we'll we'll happily use three millimeters on our new on our new part. And now we can go. We can remesh and solve and get our final results that we want to achieve. So that's just some quick um, quick analysis of the design optimization. Quick look at the design optimization tools in ST6. So thank you, and I'll hand back to you now, Barry.